Today's video is titled, I Am Faith. You are the conduit of divine visions. This Neville Goddard-based conversation is reflective on an experience that I want to share with you when I was 20 years old. During this time, I didn't know what I wanted to do as far as the next stages of my life go, career and so forth. And I recognized that I had a ability to work with computers, technology really well. Now, during that time, I was working at a warehouse, Fortune 500 Company's warehouse, distribution center. And I was putting some idea or some thought into what I wanted to do next. And the idea behind it was that some way, somehow, you were going to figure it out. You were going to find it within. The word is incurrent. So that's exactly what I did. As I went within, I said, what is it that I really want to do? I want to find the answer. Now, one lunchtime, I looked on the wall in the lunchroom, and there was these postings for jobs. And it was for the corporate head office. One of the postings was for a position called client support analyst. And the position entails performing help desk functions on IT infrastructure and desktop support for the head office, which had you know, 500 or 600 employees working out of the central head office. I said, that is my key. Now, the company that I worked for was big on and was known for hiring from within. They put priority on promoting people internally into higher levels of position. And that was the kind of culture that they encouraged. And I knew that, so I said, I'm going to get this position. Now, when I looked at the qualifications, it said university degree, all this experience, and so forth. And I felt a bit of discouragement. But because I understood certain laws of the mind, and the number one primary being that when you have a vision, it will be brought forth as long as you remain faithful and didn't allow the opinions of whatever is expressed in the outer world, more accurately put, the interpretations of those opinions, to change or waver your faith. Now, what ended up happening was I ended up connecting with some people in the company, going up to them and talking to them, people in HR, some of the IT professionals that would come from the head office and go into the server room at the warehouse because they had infrastructure there as well, and I would talk to them. And they mentioned a name. And this person was a manager of the IT department and head office. So HR was able to give me their number because I decided that I wanted to have a conversation with them to learn more about the qualifications of moving down this career path. And they welcomed it. So they gave me the number. They felt that I wasn't going to hassle them or anything like that. And I engaged in a conversation. He invited me over to the head office in which I went over there. And he introduced me to a number of people that worked there, as well as he took me around the server rooms where the infrastructure is stored, the network equipment, and the servers that are used for the file sharing and so forth. And he introduced me to different technologies that I wasn't aware of. Because remember, I came from a prior to that, learning about desktops and small networks. And this is, we're talking about big infrastructure here, big networks. Enterprise systems, otherwise referred to. So he, he showed me around and, and I asked him, I said, I'm going to apply for this position. And I've got this experience and so forth. And he said, yeah, go ahead and do it. And we'll take a look. So I applied for the position. And I didn't end up getting the position. Again, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what was it? It cannot be that I am not the person of value, as we spoke about in the last video. You are the person of value. It's got to be something else that is going to lead me into that position. Now, knowing these things were a result at that time by not surrounding myself with information that was disempowering in relation to this as well as not even talking about this to anybody. 
such as you needed the university, you needed this kind of experience and whatever else was the criteria which I didn't have at that time. But I knew that some way, somehow, I was going to figure out how to get that position. So that was one of the things that I did. I'm glad I did it at that time. I did not allow opinions and interpretations of those opinions to sway the fate. Now, I didn't end up getting the position, but I had an idea. I said, what if I go into the office and then cross-reference the position, the items on the posting, as well as my own experience and what can be done and demonstrate that I'm interested and even ask them about what are the skills that I could develop so I can get a position like that. So that's what I did. I went into the head office. Now, this time I wasn't invited to go to the head office. <laughs> I showed up there. And I remember where his office was and he had a meeting in the office and he had like 10 or 15 people in there. So I sat in front of the office, which was a lunchroom, and I was facing this window, which is reflective. So you can, you can see if the door opens and he leaves. So I sat there because I didn't want to attract any suspicion as to why I'm in this building. I managed to figure out a way, talk myself into the lunchroom in front of his office. So I sat down there. And when the door opened and everybody left, I walked in. And, you know, he was surprised to see me there. And I said to him, I said, so I applied for the position and it wasn't any kind of force or argument or anything like that. I just, it was a matter of fact conversation, straightforward. So I applied for this position. I wasn't able to get it probably for valid reasons, but I want to look at what I can do so that I can get the next available position because I really want to work here. He looked at me and he said, you know, that's very forward thinking of you and that's the right way to go about doing things. And I said to him, I said, and I was 20 years old at the time because one of the things that I thought at that particular time was one of the reasons why I didn't get that position was because of my age. So I said to him, is it because I'm 20 years old? Because I swear to you, and I have a promise to make, that if you hire me, that this is going to be one of your best hiring decisions. I will meet your expectations. Now that came out of me right in that moment. I did not think about these things to say. That was driven by this idea of faith. And when he looked at me, what he said was, promise me you won't let me down. We do have another position that's going to be available. It's called computer printer operator. Your responsibility will be to print certain reports and also to ensure that we have proper backups and certain kinds of things that you wouldn't say are at the same level of IT support in relation to that position you applied for, but it is something that will lead you down that pathway and further along in this career. And I said, I promise you, I won't let you down. And then the position became available. So I applied for it. A few weeks later, I got the position. Now, I ended up eventually getting that position of client support. I ended up getting promoted a few years later into that position and then in, even into higher positions of technical support and so forth. And then the journey continued for almost 10 years, I was in that corporate environment and I learned a lot and I grew a lot. And the very last day when I left, when I transitioned into my IT business, I had dinner with him because he had moved up to assistant vice president at the time. And we had a conversation and we reflected upon that experience. And it's amazing the kind of journey of growth and going from 20 years old to almost 30 years old at that time and dedicating your 20s working in this company and having all these amazing experiences. Now, this important reflection is going to be woven into the concepts that we're going to talk about today. Vision, faith, and the ever-evolving concept of self, which is living in faith. A lot of times we assume that we need to know how to bring forth our vision. When we have a vision, we also look for what other people are doing or our own references from our past, which may not be harmonious or disempowering, and believe based on those interpretations that what we desire falls within that same criteria of contribution. And what I mean by that is 
We believe that because we weren't able to achieve certain things or others weren't able to achieve certain things based on certain criteria, that we're not going to make it happen. But I grew up in an environment where none of that mattered. You had to figure out how to get what you want. And some way, somehow, you would figure it out because you would see people do things in ways that weren't traditional, nonlinear. It was an unconventional approach, but they would create it. And they would deliver on the goods because when you look back at that experience, I delivered on that promise. I just didn't go through it in a traditional way. In fact, four or five years later, and you know, I was thinking maybe I would go to university and go into a position after, four or five years later, after developing in that company, my boss at the time said she was going to hire some people for different positions and so forth. And she said there was tons of resumes sitting on her desk. And she said, this is the pile I have to go through to decide upon for a few positions. I and mean, maybe you can help me vet out these individuals. And I'm like, wow, this is interesting. I went down what we would call a unconventional path. And so much of Neville's teachings is about going down an unconventional path. And we can label that path and call it a faith-based path. And he states, what we imagine that we are. By our imagination, we have created this dream of life. And by our imagination, we will re-enter that eternal world of light, becoming that which we are before we imagine the world. So we're imagining all day long our visions and how we believe the journey to be to the destination. And a lot of times we may look for reference experience or how others have done things before we can determine how we should go about doing things. When, when we reflect back on our personal experiences, such as the one I shared, and we've all had these kinds of experiences, some way, somehow, we were able to bring it forth and the theater played out as all these life experiences that brought you to the destination. And it was a joyous theater because we allowed it to happen from within. We didn't find ourselves biased to rigid ways of looking at reality in a way that actually hinders the power that is within us. As he states, as soon as we succeed in transforming ourselves, the world will melt magically before our eyes and reshape itself in harmony with that which our transformation affirms. So what's happening? The concept of self is changing. And we want to identify with core attributes of an empowering concept of self, such as faith, which is loyalty to the vision unwavering, lighthearted loyalty to the vision. If we've got doubts and interpretations and we believe that other people and their experiences shape our own, then we are allowing those interpretations to be that way if it is towards the negative. If it's to the empowering or to the positive or to the affirmative to your vision, then by all means, do it and it could be in contribution. But if we assimilate towards the doubt-based or anything that seems to deny the assumption and identify with, then we go down that thread. Because perhaps I could have identified with that story, nothing wrong with that, that I needed to go down the pathway of the four or five years in university, and I would have gone down that pathway, and I would have brought forth the result from that perspective. So which perspective is better, going down that pathway or not going down that pathway? Well, upon reflection, I realized that both of them would be riddled with flow-based, harmonious-based experiences, and they would have opened up many different doors and would have taken me down many different pathways to the same destination. As I always say this, many ways to get to the same destination. And what I recommend is finding the answer within, based on what you have right now. Recognize that you have everything you need right now. If it is that something that you desire seems to present interpretations that you need to be somebody else that you are not right now, then you really have to ask yourself, is this who I need to be really who I truly desire to be, which is the true self? Because the truth is, the desire, that which you want to see brought forth, is for you. And we don't change the concept of self to become who we're not. 
we evolved the concept of self to become more of who we are, the true self. So I go down this pathway and then I share the reference experiences and then it continues to mold. And even in 2016, when I decided to be involved with the management consulting project in Los Angeles for one year, it required me to have what is known as a TN visa. Now, when I looked at the qualifications for TN visa, I noticed that they required university degree, except management consulting and scientific technician. It's part of the NAFTA agreement between Canada and US. And this was the TN visa that I qualified for. Because while I was in IT, I was also involved with operations optimization, because that's a large part of what I did aside from the IT. And all that experience plus business experience allowed me to have the credential so that when I went to the border, because the examination is done at the border, they, they cross-reference you, Border Patrol does it, and they either approve it or deny it. So based on the references and the experiences, I met the criteria accurately and they accepted the visa. I remember that day. Now, all of this is bridge of incidents because we can reflect back and say, wow, that's a very harmonious journey. It seemed completely flow-based. But I will say that it wasn't completely flow-based only because there was certain interpretations that I was identifying with during many parts of that journey, which I'm not talking about right now, which I do reveal over the videos and will continue to reveal, in which I had disempowering interpretations, either from my past or what I was interpreting based on what others were sharing about their experiences. The truth is that we are the interpreter. All the interpretation is having a effect on us from within. And we want to recognize that everything is leading us to the destination. And this is a continuous journey. So when I say ever evolving concept of self, I'm saying that one thing led to another and it continues down the pathway from growing to a certain level of proficiency in IT and experience in management and consulting and business and optimization, big business stuff, to then dedicating 10 years into entrepreneurship. And then what happens next? Well, we're continuing down this journey and more and more so we're recognizing that faith has been a determining factor to allow us to ascend past the limiting beliefs that had showed up. Perhaps it doesn't have to show up, but if it does, we can ascend from it. And simply put, staying loyal to the vision. Stay committed to the vision all the way till the end. Now, this is a preference. We don't have to do it. But I will say that the things that you truly desire to bring forth, you stay committed to. And it's not a force-based way of looking at reality. The only force is created by the thinking, the interpretations, the assumptions, the beliefs, the perspectives, the perception. And we have the power to change it. Or we have the power to saturate our mind. As stated, I was in an environment that surrounded me with certain information that says, you got to figure it out. No matter what shows up here, you've got to figure it out. And it even stated that nobody was going to help you. In those kind of environments, it was said, hey, no one's going to help you. you got to figure it out on your own. And yeah, it was challenging and at times very overwhelming. But because you were taught, you were groomed by mentors in those environments who said, you got to figure it out. Some way, somehow, you got to figure it out. What they were saying is you got to have faith. And they were able to do it and they were teaching you those things. And I'm glad they taught me those things. He says, if you have a goal, although it is unseen, it already exists. Your normal mortal eye cannot see it. But by rearranging the structure of your mind, you can see it clearly. If as the days follow one another, you remain loyal to this unseen reality and your goal is reached, you will have discovered the mystery of creation. So that's interesting. He's saying the mystery of creation. Upon reference experience and reflection and conversations with others and deep introspection on his work, as well as going deeper into the work contained within the Bible, we realize that creation is already complete. And what it appears that we're doing is going down the infinite potentiality of 
bridge of incidents, as he refers to, to the realization and the fulfillment of a vision. So you can select in your imagination what you imagine and what you desire to imagine and affirm it to be true and commit to it and then stay committed all the way to the realization to prove this in equation. He says the mystery of creation is to be understood in terms of faith. So what is faith? It is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen with the mortal eye. Through faith, we understand that the world was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was made out of things which do not appear. So the vision, it's not here right now. Whatever it is that you desire, it's not here right now. But do we have the ability to maintain loyalty to that vision? That's what we're called upon to do is to exercise that loyalty to that vision. And then we'll realize, as he states here, all things exist. We just might not see it right now via the mortal eye. However, the moment we commit to the vision, we will see what we refer to traditionally as signs and synchronicities and interesting coincidences, such as the ones that I shared with you earlier. And there's many more nuances to it. Rather than making this an extremely lengthy video getting into the nuances, I shared some key parts of that journey, which in a way, I didn't know how to predict those things, although we probably can predict those things. And sometimes I seem to be able to predict things, but some way, somehow it's brought forth through this concept of faith. He says, all things exist and the mystery of their creation must be understood in the terms of faith, but faith does not give reality to that which is unseen. Faith is loyalty to the unseen reality. Only in this sense can the meaning of faith be understood. So we need to reflect and say, more so each day, are we being more faith-based or are we constantly overthinking and looking for evidence of the five senses before we act, commit, or do anything that we truly desire? This is an important indicator. Because if we're doing that, then we're missing out on this opportunity. Now, I did a discussion on the concept of faith and belief, and I believe in working with them together in harmony. I work with them together because the truth is that we have so many beliefs and we don't have to change all of them. We just need to find the ones that are inaccurate and creating unnecessary resistance, convolution, friction, certain kinds of frustration, void, separation between where we are right now and where we want to be. And where do we get these beliefs from anyways? We get these beliefs from reference experience, from the teachings of others, from the conversations that we have had with ourselves as well as others about certain experiences in life. And faith ascends and transcends past all of that into some way, somehow, I have faith that it is going to be brought forth. As Neville has stated, scriptural faith is faith in God. He says, eternity exists and all things in eternity independent of your creative act. You may continue to build only upon what your mortal eye sees, which we're talking about belief, and perpetuate the same thing over and over again, remaining forever where you are, which is what we call subconscious re-expressions based on those subconscious beliefs. This is why going into the subconscious and understanding based on the patterns that we're playing out day to day, what is the source of these patterns, what are the interpretations, the assumptions and the beliefs that are the source of these patterns and change them and see what happens. He says, but if you know that all things exist, though unseen at the moment you have, and you have access to them through your imagination, you can rearrange the pattern of your thinking and change your world by remaining loyal to your unseen construction. That's what we have to do. Remain loyal to the unseen construction and not carry on inner conversations and inner dialogues that are based on interpretations of the five sensory experience between where we are since the inception of the idea and the fulfillment from a place of discouragement, disempowerment, and disservice to ourselves and others. And I speak about this a lot in the entrepreneurial space. And we can even relate back to, as we're talking about here in the career space or just about any area of your life. How are we interpreting the people that show up each day 
on the journey to the fulfillment of what we desire to experience? Do we see them as in harmony and in contribution via our inner dialogue or in disharmony? Well, what does the theater that plays out in how we interact with them, in how we experience them? And what can we do is change the interpretations and observe as how we relate to them change, as they change, as the experience changes. Now, when we do this, and sometimes it can be experienced as harder only because we have deeply rooted beliefs that prevent us from changing, but that's not actually preventing us from changing. We only created the interpretation that those beliefs hold us back, and we may become so identified with those beliefs that we might forget that they are the source of the theater that plays out. That's why I refer to this as purification of the mind. What are we purifying? Who we are is divine perfection. We are purifying based on the interpretations. That's what we're purifying, the interpretation. Those aspects, the beliefs, the interpretations, the assumptions that are not who we truly are and are not in relation and in harmony to the vision. And when it externalizes itself, he says, by becoming a fact that you may share with others, then you will have found the secret of creation, which was an act of faith. You must open the incurrent eye because you are going to see inwards into the world of thought, into eternity, that which is ever expanding in the bosom of God. What is it? The human imagination. The word incurrent means giving passage to a current that flows inward, such as a sponge when placed in water. Now we say this, when you have a vision and you move towards the destination, you find an inner voice conversation. I call this the true inner voice or something similar, which we call intuition that guides you to the destination and you remain loyal to it. This is what we find in this concept of incurrent the current that flows inward. One of the reasons why I always bring up the concept of flow. Well, in order to experience outward flow, you got to have inward flow in your thoughts, in your interpretation, in your experience, which is why I recommend being in flow and maintaining flow. Watch the video I did on the magic of flow and I recommend, and I'll put a link in the description. Now, as this is happening, what we're noticing is we're becoming more faithful. You realize that who you really are is faith. You are the conduit that expresses the divine vision. You receive the divine vision and you commit to it in your imagination, as in you select the state, and you stay loyal to it by remaining in that incurrent as a conduit of expression. And that's the representation of faith till it's brought forth. Now, you don't have to be perfect at it. Certainly, when I look back at my experiences, I realize that. It's an ever-realizing journey, so you become more and more faith-based as the journey continues to the realization. This is part of the ever-realizing, ever-evolving concept of self. So we are changing self, changing the concept of self, how we interpret ourselves to be, how we interpret ourselves to be in relation to the vision, how we interpret ourselves to be about the aspects, the attributes that show up in relation to the vision, such as, for example, in those days, I looked at the qualifications that was on the posting. And while I had some doubt that showed up, I didn't identify with those doubts because in the environments that I grew up, you were taught to look at things from perspectives beyond what was suggested to you. You were taught that you don't have to listen to people. You got to listen to yourself. You got to learn to trust yourself. These are things that I had learned in earlier stages in my life from my friends that were extremely valuable to me. I especially remember one of my friends, this guy, he was very confident, super confident. Everywhere he went and I'd hang out with him, he was one of my best friends. People would gravitate towards him. He thought very unconventionally. The thing about it is I learned a lot from him. And what he had carried with him was this high degree of faith. Now, he was not exempt from the same conditions. Neither was I, neither are you. We still have all this interpretations. So there were times where he wasn't as faith-based. There are times that I wasn't as faith-based. 
but he had a high degree of faith, so he taught me these things. He taught me these things, which later on, after reading books like The 50th Law by 50 Cent, was called street knowledge. And my friends at the time taught me those things, which we later on label as street sense, which was very important. It was simply listening to yourself, not allowing the five sensory interpretations to waver your faith in the assumption. And that shapes you. And which is why I always recommend knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. The experience that you get from integration of this information, from actually going out and doing and living the philosophy, that can also be tied into the street sense. The knowledge in which you acquire, which we call book knowledge, is also important because what I learned was that with the book knowledge plus the street sense, I was able to ascend even higher. So that when I would read the books, they would awaken more of those understandings that were already there, that were affirmed to be true. But when you study the work of Neville, you realize that all these things that he was talking about were things that you already inherently knew. That's related to the true inner voice, so the incurrent. Or how he states here, humanity is a single being in spite of its many forms and faces. And there is in it only such seeming separation we find in our own being when we are dreaming. So as he states it many times, everyone is you pushed out. This is all an interpretation of what's within consciousness. And we can change the interpretation to express as the journey and the realization of that vision. And everybody was there contributing to our vision. And our goal is to, through bringing forth our vision, also mold this world of ours into a higher degree of love. Because you'll notice that when you have a vision and you bring it forth and you reflect back on the journey, all the experiences that you had with others, environment, circumstance, and information, and your contribution to the evolution or the revelation of a higher degree of love in all those aspects along your journey by maintaining faith. It's the beliefs that create the disharmony with each other on the journey. It's the faith that brings forth a higher degree of harmony. Now, we can have empowering beliefs that bring forth a higher degree of harmony. And we can further elevate those beliefs into higher degrees of harmony. And faith brings us into a higher degree of receiving within, via the inner voice or in current, the accurate higher level of thought, which forms the higher level of belief which further ascends us into higher degrees of faith. Watch the video I did on faith and belief. And what happens? The concept of ourself changes. Or as he states, it is our conception of ourselves which frees or constrains us, though it may use material agencies to achieve this purpose. However, our ordinary alterations of consciousness, as we pass from state to another, are not transformations because each of them are so rapidly succeeded by another in the reverse direction. But whenever one state grows so stable as to definitely expel its rivals, then that central habitual state defines the character and is a true transformation. So all day long we're moving into different states. What we want to do is maintain the ideal state of mind. Because that ideal state of mind becomes the identity, the self-image. And all day long, we can go through different kinds of experiences in which we identify with different states and then assume to be or interpret ourselves to be the representation of that state, even if it's not who we truly are. But we have the power to maintain the ideal state of mind, which is simply put, found by asking yourself, who is that person? that I am in that vision? And how is that person interpreting and living right now? Be in the now, otherwise referred to. Living right now from the truth that you already are that person right now. And we don't have to be perfect at this. We get better at it each day. That's why I recommend an affirmation like, I realize that I am faith. I am divine perfection. I am in relation and in harmony with my vision.
Upon reflection, I realized that I was always like this. Upon reflection, I realized this is who I am. Upon reflection, I realized that I'm revealing more of who I am each day. Because remember, the natural self, and Neville refers to it as spiritual self and natural self, the natural self is can be a lot of times identified with the past, present, and future. So we want to have an inner dialogue or an affirmation that seems to connect with that so we don't feel a disconnect. But the spiritual self sees everything as now. Creation is complete now. Eternity exists now. Past, present, and future exist in the now. So we're weaving them together via the inner conversation. And as stated in one of his previous lectures, and I always like playing that clip if you watch my videos regularly, the two gifts of speech and mind. Those are the gifts. And with speech and mind, we ascend both in natural expression, as in what we bring forth, the visions, as well as spiritually ascend in the mind to higher forms of understanding or self-realization or evolving the understanding of who you really are, the true self, which was there in the beginning when we were born into this world, but our beliefs may separate us from that truth and we can connect back to it. This is called becoming childlike again which is distinct from being childish, childlike nature, childlike curiosity, one with a vision, more faith-based. He says, if we become as emotionally aroused over our ideals as we become over our dislikes, we would ascend to the plane of our ideals as easily as we would now descend to the level of our hates. So these are preferences within. What are we saying I am to? What interpretation are we saying I am to? Is it in relation and in harmony with the vision or is it disempowering? One of my favorite exercises that I love to do and I encourage everyone to do is to, on a regular basis, maybe three or four of these a day, write down any disempowering interpretations that show up in relation to people, environment, circumstance, or information, or your vision. Write it down and reflect upon it at the end of the night. And ask yourself, what is a more accurate way of looking at this in a way that affirms the vision? And you will find right then and there the accurate interpretation. You'll find it. That is the attribute of the incurrent. And then you can take those and turn them into affirmations or inner dialogues, or you can find exactly what it is as it is stated in the Bible, ask and he shall receive. And you will find the accurate interpretation from within via the incurrent and affirm and assign yourself that interpretation and realize that that is also the purification of the mind, which then brings forth a higher degree or accurate conception of the concept of self in relation to the vision. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.